Hi, I'm Fred from CodeStudent.net. Welcome back to the Java Text RPG tutorial series. In the last part, we created a system for the player to encounter random events on the journey based on the current story act. Additionally, we set up a class for the player's enemies. In this part, we are going to implement a battle system. We will add the functionality to the attack and defend methods inside the character classes and create some methods in the game logic class to lead the player through the battle process. If you missed the last part of this awesome tutorial series, make sure to watch it now. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up if you would like to see more tutorials like this. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more interesting content. This tutorial is also available in written format on CodeStudent.net, so make sure to check it out. The battle system of our game is fairly simple. At every point in a fight, there will only be the player and one opponent. In each round of battle, both parties calculate their attack and defense values and deal the damage that remains after subtracting defense from attack. In addition to this, the player can convert some of his defense into damage, but more to this later. The first thing we are going to do is adding the functionality to the attack and defend methods inside the player and enemy class. After some balancing, I came up with a few formulas for calculating those values, but feel free to adjust them to an extent you're comfortable with. Here are my versions. Next, we need a method that creates a random battle with a random enemy. Go inside the game logic class and create a method of type void without any parameters. Inside this method, clear the console and print the heading saying that the player encountered an enemy. After this, Use the anything to continue method to let the game pause until the player wants it to continue. The last thing to do inside this method is creating a new enemy object with a random name and passing it as a parameter to the main battle method. The whole method should look something like this now. Let's create the main battle method. In its core, it's just an infinite loop that will only be exited through the break keyword when either the player or the enemy is dead or the player manages to escape from the fight. Inside the loop, First clear out the console. Then print two headings. Inside the first one, print out the enemy's name and HP in separate lines. The second heading will contain the player's name and HP in different lines as well. Below that, ask the player to choose an action and print a small separator. List the three options the player has. The player can fight, use a potion, we will create this mechanic in the next part, or try to run away. After this, use the readInt method to get the user's input. Use a conditional statement to react accordingly. Write down all three cases now, because this battle method will get fairly complicated as we will use a lot of conditional statements. If the player chose option number one, both the player and the enemy will deal damage to each other. Store the difference between the player's attack and the enemy's defense and the difference between the enemy's attack and the player's defense in two separate variables. If the damage took value is less than zero, we want to subtract half of the damage took from the damage the player is going to deal to the enemy. I did this because it helps balancing offensive and defensive traits the player chooses. After we increase the amount of damage, we want to set damage took to zero. If you wouldn't do this, the player could heal instead of getting zero damage. For the same reason, set damage to zero if it's negative as well. After that, subtract the amounts of damage from the HP of both characters. In the next step, we want to give the player a clean overview on what happened during the current round of battle. For this, clear the console and print a heading. Then, print out how much damage the player dealt and how much damage the player took. Separate both. Let the game pause until the player continues. After each round of battle, we want to check if the battle is over. First, check if the player's HP is below zero. If that's the case, call a method called player died and break out of the loop. We are going to create this method at the end of this part of the tutorial. If the player is still alive, check if the enemy's HP is below zero. If that's the case, clear out the console and print a heading telling the player that he killed the enemy. Then increase the player's XP by the enemy's XP and print out how much XP the player gained. After that, use anything to continue and break out of the loop. Option number two, using a potion. As we will implement this feature in the next part, just leave the area between the two curly braces empty for now. If the player chose option number 3, clear out the console first. Then use a conditional to check if the player managed to escape. I set the escape chance to 35%, but feel free to change this. If the player escaped successfully, print that inside the heading and break out of the loop. Don't forget to let the game pause before breaking out of the battle loop. 
If the player tried to escape but wasn't successful, we want to punish the player's character for it. Calculate the damage the player takes and feel free to adjust this to your preferences. Print out a heading telling the player that he or she didn't manage to escape and how much damage the enemy dealt to him or her. After that, check if the player is still alive and use the anything to continue method again. For the final battle in the fourth act, we don't want the player to escape. Therefore, cut everything we wrote for option number 3 and paste it inside a new conditional that checks the current act. If we are inside the final battle, just print out a heading telling the player that there is no escape from the evil emperor. The whole battle method should look something like this now. For the case that our player gets killed, we need a method that ends the game and tells the player his final amount of XP. Create a simple method that prints out all the necessary stuff and sets is running to false, so the game loop won't continue. Feel free to test the new battle system as much as you like. Also remember to delete the two slashes in front of the random battle function call inside the random encounter method. Also, make sure to fix any spelling mistakes or typos you might have done in this fast paced episode. That was all for the fifth part of the Java Text RPG tutorial series. In this exciting part, we implemented the largest feature of the whole game, the battle system. We also added a method that deals with the player dying to an enemy and therefore ending the game. As always, if you have any questions about today's tutorial, just ask us in the comments on Instagram or Twitter or simply send us an email. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm Fred from CodeStudent.net and I hope you enjoyed this part of the Java Text RPG series. Stay motivated learning how to code and have a nice day.